Hello, and thank you for joining me. You're here with data science teacher Brandon, and we're going to go over our figure level plots and or the difference between figure level plots and axis level plots. So you're probably all familiar with axis level plots, which are just your histogram, your KDE plot, your scatter plot. Those are all axis plots. So it's one, one graphic at a time. It's kind of putting basically the graphic in the square uh, of your, your figure. Okay. So figure level R allow you to create essentially many plots all together to create a grid uh, and you can define them based on the, the a category. You can say split up that these plots are going to be split by the gender or a different category and so on like that. So it allows a lot of flexibility. It allows you to do many plots at once. Um, and lots of times it can replace what you need to do normally in a loop. Uh, you want to look at the distributions in a loop. Well, maybe you can look at the distributions by the categories. Uh, and do many at once uh, in another way. So it allows for a lot of detailed analysis that you would not otherwise be able to do. Well, that you would be able to do otherwise, but you could do much easier and much faster uh, using uh, bigger level plots. Okay. So here we're just importing our standard data science libraries. And here what we're going to do is importing a POSIM data set from my GitHub reservoir. It's just a good data set to work with. The particular reason that I chose this one, what I did is I added a color palette to kind of mix things up. So I'm setting, we'll be pulling on this PAL, the palette for all of our colors today. You'll see us using that. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sns.set underscore style. I'm going to set the background to a darker. I have some basically light, lighter colors, I think, in my palette, you could say. And so I just want to make the background of the plot. You can see just the dark grid right here, the square, a little bit darker, and just kind of make sure those plots stand out. Okay. And that would be good if you have lighter colors. If you have darker colors, you maybe want to do the white grid. Uh, so let's first talk about the rel plot. So this gives you access to the scatter plot and the line plot. We're looking for relational plots. So we're looking for relations between two variables. Uh, so usually with the scatter plot, you want to look any continuous variable. So we have age and we have handle length uh, right here of the, the flipper length, I guess I would say, uh, of the animals. And so we, you can see here by we're just going date equals df, x equals age, y equals handle with another continuous variable, and then height. So height is controlling the height, and then aspect will control the width, right? So if we say height 3.5, the aspect is automatically going to be 3.5 as well, unless we do something more to control that. I find that the standard printout of the seaborne plots makes it a little bit big sometimes, especially after an update recently. So this just gives you the ability to control, a very easy way to control your plots, it's more the size of your plots. Is. And then color here, I'm drawing the first position of my palette. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, so here getting into the figure level, so nothing really super special here, this is using a scatter plot. So why would we use the L plot? We would use it if we want to do if we want to say separate this scatter plot, look at it individually, look at the age by the handle, let's see if that, it that relationship is different for females and males. You can see, although not drastically different, there is an interesting kind of outliers, I guess. There's kind of a pull on the weight. There's some data up here that doesn't exist down here. And this one on the right side extends a little bit further, right? So the age. And then it'd be kind of interesting to understand why that happens, right? So why. Why are we not missing a lot of data that doesn't exist here? Is that really a dominant male feature? And again, kind of gives us a way to inspect this very quickly by a category um, very easily. So we're setting the rows. So we're going to do one in each row. Okay. So that was our scatter plot by default. To change what type of plot we want to do, we can go kind equals line. And so you can see here now we're going to do age over hand and width. And so the line plot does. Uh, bootstrap resampling to calculate this, this confidence interval right here, but it's really where most of the data is falling. So we know that 95% of the data is going to fall within this. And so roughly you could say if you're age four, your handle width is going to be you know, 93 or something, right? but it's going to be between a range of 94 and 92 sort of thing. So it gives you a sense of the data, especially when we have like kind of a sky, we have more than one data point. We need to know if we want to plot a line of that. It's not usually a solid line. The line is kind of the average, but we need to really understand the what are the probabilities that you're kind of around the line? Like where is the line really concentrated? So you can see here we have some really spread out places and some really concentrated places. So it's a lot of interesting things. They're very easy to switch between a scatter plot and a line plot and look for those relationships. Well, 
getting into univariate analysis, we have the dis plot, not so not the dist without the t, so it's the dis plot. So lots of times I see this used as just a, a, an axis level plot, and you can, there's no reason you can't, it gives you access to the his plot by default. So lots of people just, I shouldn't say a lot of people, but sometimes you'll see it being used just for that reason. But the dis plot gives us access to so much more. So we want to just keep in mind that we do have access to a lot of plotting ability with a figure level plot like the disk plot. Okay, so what we're going to do here, the same syntax, data equals df, x equals one continuous variable, heights, and then color paths. So setting the same thing. Nothing, no, none of the options, by default, it gives us a histogram. And okay? you can see outliers, his distributions are so valuable, and histograms are really a great way to be able to examine. Okay, another type of plot that we can do is the KDE plot, so the kernel density estimation. Uh, that really gives us a probability distribution, but it does a lot of the smoothing and try to give us a better sense. I always feel like it gives us an outline of where the distribution is, and you can really start making, is the data distribution here or there? But what we're doing here is we're going to set the hue equal to sex. So we're not saying row or height, we're just saying the hue. Now we can change the color by the category that we want to change. Whereas up above, we, we said the row is going to be the category. Here we wanted to see them on top of each other. So we're going to set the hue equal to the sex. Okay, so a category column, so males and females. Okay, and you can see, oh, there's a just there's a difference. You can really see as well though the, the distributions seem to really sit in the same place. The females are a little bit more concentrated uh, versus the males seem a little bit more spread out, but they really sit in the same place. That'd be good understanding. Like averages might look the same, but they really don't talk about dispersion, and so that's something we would want to concentrate here. And that would be something that's just very easy to notice with the outline of your data with the KDE, the kernel density estimate plot. Okay, so the ECDF plots and this is the empirical density function this is very similar and this is showing the cumulative density function so what it's doing is you're kind of stepping up each one of these stops but what it's showing is really where the data is this is where the kde does a lot of the smoothing even if you did a cumulative kde it still would show you a smooth line the empirical density function just really shows you very similar as related to this but it doesn't do the smoothing the kernel density in between these two it's just showing you where the data is. You can see actually right here, we miss a lot of data and just sort of drop down. So that's something you, you can't see with that smoothing and then understanding here. Uh, and it's really kind of interesting. You can see how much, again, the dispersion is this line slowly draws up as we're right here. The, the steepness of the line is very steep, but it happens very quickly where it can risen. It really just shows the concentration in the density that we saw, well, more concentration in the density that we saw for females versus males. Okay, and the rug, the rug plot. Okay, so the rug plot isn't a standalone one. We can set, when we're looking at KDE or any of the other plots, what we can do is we set rug equals to true. It's gonna put the little dots on, on the bottom right here, sorry, the little rudge, rugs on the bottom right here. It gives a sense of where the data really is. You can see here, one spot is causing this little bump right here. It's only one data, so there's no data in between. So it gives you some sense of this is really an outlier and the context of, of how it's affecting it would be really, in an understanding of why it's not there. So we're looking at exactly just a specific um, this specific row, okay? And then here in the density, just to show an interesting feature in Seaborn that's good to understand is this, the KWS, the keywords. And really what this is when we wanna control an underlying plotting function with a more complex plot. So we have, the, we have lots of plots that will use actually two different functions, a line plot and a scatter plot will make the reg plot. So we can control the underlying line plot, the underlying scatter plot in that situation with this KWS. Here we can control the underlying rug, rug because it's part of the uh, plot, we can just control it. So we can control the underlying, if we were to use rug plot, we can just control the height, we give it the argument height, and then we give it the argument 0.25. Now what this is going to do is going to give us, we're gonna say 0.25, so right about here, our, our rugs are gonna go up, but maybe 0.25 is a little bit high, but just to show that we can play around with that using this a dictionary to control so the key value pair where we're putting it in the curly brackets okay it allows us to control if i want to pass height to a rug plot i would be putting height equals to this but using a dictionary i can kind of key those key the pair to them to the argument i'd use in that function and then i can give it a value that i'd be passing to it so it just attaches those two together and allows seaborn to pass it to the lower level function
lower level, lower level plotting function. Okay, so moving on to the cat plot. Okay, so going into the cat plot, we have lots of things available in the cat plot. As you can see, lots of strip plots, one plot, box plot, violin plot, point plot, and bar plot. So we've got a few things to cover. Okay, so the strip plot shows a lot of detail and it really shows you where the data is. It's supposed to show really the distribution, but it's not going to kind of hide or smooth anything. We're just really seeing where the data is. Yeah, really, really here what I'm doing is I'm setting the row population, setting the row, going to be the population here. I'm making the height a little bit smaller because you can see in a strip plot, it's very long and skinny, so I find it makes a lot of sense to make these quite a bit smaller. Uh, and I'm setting aspect, aspect equals to, so I'm going to say it's, it's two times the height as the width. So this is two times bigger. It's not two inches now. It's two times the height. So if it was one, it would make it the same as the height, which is what it's by default. Okay. And so what I'm just doing something here, so I'm setting the population by the two, the two categories, so other and Vic, but I'm also then setting the hue by sex. So you can see really the dispersion between these two populations of the male and female. And strip plot is really great for this kind of detailed analysis. We really want to see the detail of individual data points. Sometimes you have too much data and that's not possible, but when you have kind of a moderate amount of data, it can be valuable. But sometimes one of the things about a strip plot is they're on top of each other. So if you want to see them just really the real data without some of the data hiding or being on top of the other data, we can use something called the swarm plot, which does a very similar to the strip plot, but what it's really trying to do is make sure none of the points appear on top of the other points. You can see here, kind of looks like a creating pattern, but what it's really just doing is making sure not one is on top of the other one. And so you get a true sense of really where the data is. You can see here, there's a lot of green right in this section. There's one red, but it's really all green right here. And this kind of gets hidden Actually, I guess you can kind of see it here, and then there's lots of red here. Which one works the best will, will kind of be dependent. I would say I prefer the the swarm plot just because you're not you you know nothing's going to be hidden, but it can be it can be quite busy and stuff. So swarm plot is great when you're looking for a lot of detail. You can see that the reason that the green comes out this far is because this is really all a whole bunch of data happens at this one point. And so kind of asking why is, why is maybe they're getting rounded up to this point and you want to understand why so much data seems to be happening right at this point. And that's something that you would lose in the sense you could just kind of patch together. You don't really know how much data is right in this specific region. So that's where this one plot comes in handy. You can look at a box plot here. So we're going to set row population. So we're going to set the population by the row. And I'm just going to change kind equals to box. So I'm using the cat plot again. It's kind equals box. Okay, so we've got the VIC and the other population. You get, you get a distribution. There are no outliers. So we usually use box plot to see if there are outliers over here by the classic definition. Uh, this box is the interquartile range. And so one and a half times that is anything beyond that would be an outlier and you see a daughter here. So we're not seeing any outliers in the classic definition, but we might find that they still affect some, some of these dispersed or these kind of not outliers, but very close to being outlier values still affect our machine learning models and we want to do things with them, but this is a quick, easy way to determine that, to determine if there are any outliers by what we classically define. Very much related to the box plot is the violin plot. You can see the box is actually in the middle of the violin plot, but it gives us more the KDE. It's the same, it's repeating on both sides, so it's a mirror image, but a KDE so it gives us a little bit more texture than just the box plot by itself. Box plot is great if you want to focus on the outliers, but if you still want to have some sense of the distribution, I, I personally prefer the violin plot because it makes, gives us a little bit more detail about what the actual set of this box here it gives us a little bit more detail about how it builds up to the box, what the box looks like. Because here you can see there's kind of two levels in this where the box would be. And that would be interesting to understand why that would be. There's a little bit more detail. Maybe that's important. Maybe it's not. But it's kind of nice to know that sort of thing. And the only difference here is that I said colon, column, col, I uh, equal to the sex. So e equal to the category right here. Okay. Another one is the point plot, which gives us, it's putting a point for each one of them. So I'm putting age across the axis. So it's putting for each one of the ages, whatever range, kind of like how the line plot would give us the confidence interval. That's what this is around the plot. This is where the average is, and it's giving the confidence interval around that. And you can see actually when it's very, very interesting, when you're a female and you're older, we're very confident you're going to be in this one kind of skull width. But when you're born, very interesting why that happens, but you have a very large range of your skull width, right? So it'd be kind of interesting to understand why that happens. Maybe they kind of 
are soft when you're born and then they kind of harden up as you get older. So it'd be an interesting question. We have a theory now, or we're not a theory, we have a insight that would be interested to understand a little bit better. Maybe it's valuable, maybe it's not, but it could be really valuable into understanding why females have kind of a wider range of skull width at birth. So they get really handy with the point plot just to highlight where you see these greater ranges. Okay. And then the bar plot to, to wrap up today, we're going to do age and skull width. So what this is doing is the skull width on the left hand side, it's doing age across the bottom. And so this is just doing the average by default and the confidence interval as well as built right into this to show us the range. You can see where we're seeing it with the female right here. The point plot makes a, a higher um, emphasis on these, the variation, but you can still notice it here on the bar plot. I would say bar plot is good, but it's a little bit more valuable. I would say the bar plot isn't really super valuable compared to all of the, when we have access to all of the other plots. Bar plot is great to have like an effect. You're showing like a, these things are decreasing or increasing, and you can really see that the average is not decreasing or increasing. I would say that there's a lot of better options than the bar plot, so I'd say for last, because it was probably the one that I used the least, if I'm honest. There's just so many good options in SQL. So thank you very much for joining me today. Have fun with these figure level plots, and I will see you next time.